We are on day five of a boil order for Liberty Lakes water. We checked in with a local business to see how it's impacting them. We enjoyed sunshine and mild temperatures today and your holiday week travel weather is looking good. The Seattle Seahawks scored a late touchdown to seal the game against the Philadelphia Eagles, but it was the defense that was the story of the game. A lot of precautions to meet the standards of having the water contaminated and still being open. Samples of E. coli were found in Liberty Lake water, forcing a boil notice that's still in place throughout the district. The longer it goes on, the more effects are felt throughout the community. It's good to have you here with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. Krem 2's Brandon Jones is live in Liberty Lake to explain how people are getting through this. And Brandon, you found out some businesses are taking a big hit. Yeah, they're taking hits. I'm in a pretty large plaza right now, and there's quite a few locally owned businesses that have been impacted by this boil. They go to places like Safeway, who's told me they're stacked up on bottled water because of the demand. Now, they'll just have to wait out the rest of the situation and move a bit different than what they're used to. I've never, I've lived yeah. here all my life, and I've never Yeah, same with me. There's, yeah, there's... Never been something quite like this. Liberty Lake Juice Company has to use water every day. So you can imagine they've had some twists and turns in their normal operations. So that water boil has been in place for the last couple of days and it's affected places like this local business right here. They've had to make some changes to their menu. One of those major changes removes the juices and elixirs from their lineup, which has turned some customers around once they find out. People are afraid to come out and purchase food now that they know that the whole community is contaminated with water. They don't know if certain places are following the health code properly. But they've been working their hardest to get over those hurdles. That means taking precautions to ensure the quality of their products, using bottled and filtered water for their coffee and oats. When it comes to cleaning procedures, they soak equipment in bleach water baths. Fruit is rinsed down with their filtered water, and just as a reminder, they place signs on sinks that can't be used, and ice is a no-go right now. That process has been a little bit more tedious, but definitely worthwhile so we're able to stay open for people that yes. have like the healthy options for the community, mm -hmm. not only Liberty Lake, but all around. They've even got hand sanitizer and signs in their restrooms as a reminder for their customers. While they wait on word of when that boil will be lifted, they have other items on their menu that don't need water. Things like smoothies and acai boil bowls are still being sold. From Liberty Lake, Brandon Jones, Crim2 News. Brandon, thank you. Well, Thanksgiving is only four days away, and we know some of you might be traveling over the mountains to visit family or friends. Here's a look at some of the conditions on our area mountain passes. If you're headed through Idaho, right now would be a great time as the roads are clear and dry today. Snoqualmie Pass is also looking good too. Today is dry and clear, but keep in mind snow chances at the beginning of this week could quickly change those conditions. Meanwhile, Stevens Pass is a different story though. There is snow, slush, and and ice on the roadway, so make sure to bring your winter driving kit. And on Sherman Pass, same goes for drivers in that area. There's plenty of snow and it's even on the road in some spots, so make sure to be careful. Well, we've been hearing about the possibility of snow during the holiday week, but meteorologist Michelle Boss says it's not looking too bad for travel, though, across the northwest. She joins us now in the Weather Center. Michelle. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we've been hearing in the past week that it looked like we were going to finally see some snow across the area. Of course, with all the travel going on, you might be concerned that there's going to be some problems. But right now, uh, even though we will likely see a little bit of snow this week, it doesn't look like any big winter storm or anything like that. So uh, not looking like there's going to be a whole lot of delays. We're going to take a look at the mountain travel forecast for Tuesday and Wednesday. See, since I think there's going to be a little bit more heavy travel during those two days. So for Snoqualmie and Stevens Pass for Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday could see some isolated snow showers, uh, but no major accumulations. Wednesday should be dry for Lookout Pass. Isolated snow on Tuesday. Wind might be a bigger factor on Wednesday for any high profile vehicles and across the I-84 corridor for Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday, some light rain and snow along that route. But then on Wednesday, again, I think wind is going to be a bigger issue and we'll be keeping an eye on that visibility right now though is looking much better than it did yesterday a little bit of a breeze cleared out that fog and we're looking at 10 mile visibility all across the region we enjoyed some sunshine this afternoon and skies remain mostly clear across the inland northwest we will start to see an increase in clouds tonight and tomorrow but uh, in the meantime things are looking pretty good temperature wise above freezing in spokane upper 30s a little bit cooler Coeur d'Alene down to the lower 30s it has dipped into the 20s in deer park and take a look at the next 12 hours if you are going to be out and about this evening looking at temperatures in the 
the 30s, um, increasing clouds, but dry conditions. And here's a look at the next three days. Some isolated snow showers, nothing that's going to hamper your travel here in the Spokane Coeur d'Alene area on Monday. Same on Tuesday, isolated snow showers, but again, starting Tuesday night into Wednesday, some very windy conditions. We could see gusts over 40 miles per hour. Otherwise, conditions looking dry into Thanksgiving. Michelle, thank you. Well, new tonight, Spokane Valley deputies arrested a 15 year old male after he allegedly threatened Central Valley High School on social media this weekend. We do want to mention, though, that this is a separate threat from the one the school received on Friday. The sheriff's office says the student does not attend CV, but made a threat on Snapchat. When officers arrived at his home to arrest him, he said it was a joke, apparently, and thought it would be funny. Deputies booked him into the Spokane County Juvenile Detention Center for threats to bomb or your property. Well, we want to thank everyone who made the 20th annual Tom's Turkey Drive a huge success. Because of your generosity, thousands of area families will get a Thanksgiving meal. And it's not over yet. Second Harvest and Creme 2 invite anyone who needs a meal to come to Tom's Turkey Tuesday at the Spokane Arena. We'll open the doors at 10 in the morning and hand out meals until 5 o'clock or until all the meals are gone. Well, as we get ready to celebrate the holidays here at home, we do want to remember our men and women stationed overseas during Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's where Treats to Troops comes in. Here's how you can help make a difference. You can uh, make gift boxes for our deployed service members from Fairchild Air Force Base, and you can donate to a, tre a treat until November 26th at any area Washington Trust Bank branch. It's an easy way to say thank you and happy holidays to those who are far from family and friends during the season. You can find a list of the most wanted items on creme.com. Well, one thing we do not have a shortage of is those robocalls. Americans were bombarded with nearly 6 billion robocalls this past October alone. But now we know how to cash in on all of those calls. So the Telephone Consumer Protection Act and the telemarketing sales rule make it illegal for companies to use an automated dialer to call or text your phone without permission. Those who do violate that law actually have to pay $500. And victims on the do not call list are entitled to $1,500. You can get that money with three simple steps. First, answer the phone and ask the caller for their company name, website, and address. Then write a letter saying you're giving them the opportunity to settle out of court. Then you want for, you'll have to wait for the company's response. To find specific examples of how to execute this plan, you can visit our website, creme.com. All right, on to sports now. The Seahawks beat the Eagles 17 to 9 on the road today. Karthik joins us now in studio. It wasn't the prettiest performance for the offense, but the defense stepped up in a big way, Karthik. Yeah, with how good the defense was for the Seahawks today, Seattle probably should have put this game away in the first half. However, there were crucial miscues on the offensive side of the ball, but the offense did have a couple of plays that were the difference in this game. In the first one came in the first quarter, and it was crazy. Wilson pitches it to Chris Carson, who then laterals it back to Wilson, and he launches it deep to Malik Turner for a touchdown. That was some nifty stuff for the Seahawks. First points of the day, Pete Carroll described this one the best. I should say, the, the catch and the throw that uh, Russ was gotten from the leap was, was just exquisite. After that, the offense was not as exquisite. There were two missed opportunities that really stuck out in this game, and they both came in the second quarter. This was the first one when Wilson missed Jacob Hollister wide open in the end zone. Seahawks settled for a field goal to go up 10-3. The other one happened closer to halftime. DK Metcalf found himself open but dropped a touchdown pass. The Seahawks ended up having to punt the ball on this possession. If they got both of those with how good the defense was, the Seahawks probably could have put this one away late in the first half. The Seahawks offense put this game away on this play in the fourth quarter. Rashad Penny had this 58-yard touchdown to the house for a 17-3 lead. Then you're going to have to check out the hops from wide receiver David Moore on the celebration right here. Just leap straight over him. That's athleticism. But Penny, best running back for the Seahawks today. 14 carries, 129 yards to go with that touchdown. He got more carries than Chris Carson. The first round pick from 2018 was very good and says he's in the best shape of his life. I'm, I'm doing way better than what I've done in the past. I stopped eating McDonald's. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that was hard for me. But then, you know, I just got serious about football because, you know, that's it, um, um, having great body weight and great body shape, you know. 
takes you a long way as a running back. I felt an extra burst, and you know, I was like pretty pleased with myself when I came back to the sideline. I was, I was kind of warming myself as well, like how fast I felt. And then we saved the best for last. The defense was the unit that made the biggest plays in this game. The offense was struggling most of the game. The defense held the Eagles to just three points until they let up a garbage time touchdown with 20 seconds left. In the game, the big number was that they forced five turnovers, two interceptions and three fumbles. Rasheem Green also stepping up big today, playing more with Jadavion Clowney out with an injury. He forced a fumble, had a sack, and had two QB hits. Here comes one of them. Trey Flowers also played really well. He had an interception, some timely pass deflections. Those were the two that really stuck out to me, but the defense as a unit really showed up time and time again. We were seeing what we were doing, doing in practice, so but, but to be honest, I'm not really surprised that we got uh, all the picks and sacks. So we tell the offense, listen, you can give us three points, we'll win the game. And, you know, when you have the type of mindset, we're willing to go through anything. We really, we'll go through a brick wall for the offense. And, you know, once the offense get really hot, we're going to be unstoppable. The Seahawks' next game is going to be on Monday night football against the Minnesota Vikings. That game will be at home at Century Link Field. Tip. All right, Karthik, thank you. Well, looking ahead now to Apple Cup, if you thought the Apple Cup couldn't get any more competitive, you were wrong. This competition within a competition benefits Team Gleason, which works to fund treatment and research for patients with ALS. Gleason partnered with WSU to go head to head with Phil Green, a University of Washington alum and former football player who was diagnosed with ALS. The two are battling it out in the Apple Cup ALS Challenge. Whichever school raises $50,000 first wins. So you can donate up until halftime of the Apple Cup on November 29th, November 29th, which is Friday. And to give you an idea of how your team is doing, here's a look at the competition's leaderboard. Right now, it looks like WSU is up just by 2%. So if you want to donate, you can find a link on our website, creme.com. The outdoor industry is anticipating another round of terrorists from the White House this season, but they say they've already paid billions of dollars to cover the cost of the previous tariffs. How it's affecting their business next.